Hey guys, it's Josh, the 90 Know-It-All, coming to you today to tell you guys who I would vote for if I had a vote for the Hall of Fame. But before we get into that, if you guys could do me a quick favor, go click the thumbs up button on the video. It does help quite a bit, actually. Leave a comment below on who you would vote for if you had a vote. And don't forget to subscribe to the 90 Know-It-All channel. We got videos coming out all the time, talking a lot of Major League Baseball, things that are going on, just having fun talking baseball. So guys... If I had a vote for the Hall of Fame, who would I vote for? What would I do? And there's, you know, I'm a part of the IBWAA, which is the Internet Baseball Writers uh, Association. And we don't have an official um, Hall of Fame, but we do a vote uh, each year, go through and kind of pick out uh, who we think should be in our Hall of Fame. And we've actually had guys get voted in earlier than what they did with the Baseball Writers of America and their vote. So um, I'm a part of that, but I'm not a part of the BBWAA. So, you know, I, I'll never be a part of that. You have to be a baseball writer for a, a certain level of, of newspaper or, or whatever it is for 10 years to have a vote. So I know I'll never get that. And that's fine. But I still want to talk about who I would vote for if I had the chance. So obviously right off the bat, my first pick of my 10 is going to be Derek Jeter. He's a Hall of Famer. Whether you like the Yankees or not, I'm not a big fan of the Yankees, but I respect their tradition. And let's be honest, Derek Jeter has championships. He has hits. He has, and yes, he may have been overhyped uh, for much of his career, but that doesn't make him any less of a Hall of Famer. He's still a Hall of Famer. He gets my first vote uh, if I had 10 votes. So next on the list is actually two guys. I'm going to put them together because everyone else does. I'm voting for Roger Clemens. And Barry Bonds. I know a lot of people are anti-PED, and, and I get that. I am anti that, but I see the Hall of Fame as a museum to tell the story of baseball. And if you don't have Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens in that story, in that discussion about the history of baseball, especially for the time frame in which they played, that history is incomplete. And so I would vote for those two guys to be in. Yes, I believe they took PEDs. They were never suspended. But let's be honest, we all are pretty pretty much on board with the fact that they took stuff. Um, but for whatever reason, you know, I look at the, once again, it's the history of the game, the story of the game. That's what I see the Hall of Fame as. Yes, it's supposed to be sacred, but it's baseball. And I want baseball history to be recorded in the Hall of Fame. So those two guys get my vote. The fourth guy who gets my vote is Larry Walker. This guy was an all-around player. And I know people talk about, oh, man, he played at Coors. He didn't play at Coors Field all his career. And the guy was still a great defensive player, a great offensive player. The guy was all around. He was just, I don't know, players, pitchers feared him. Other teams respected him. He was the real deal. I think he is... I think he deserves it. I really do. I think he should be in there. Uh, looking at the numbers, I think they warrant him being in the Hall of Fame. And I think he's not a Hall of Good. He is a Hall of Famer. I really think uh, that he is up there. The next guy I vote for, similar reasons, although he did play at Coors most of his, or all of his career, is Todd Helton. I think this guy is pretty deserving as well. Um, he was kind of a borderline pick for me. I wasn't really sure if I wanted to, to put him on my 10. Uh, but at the same time, I'm one of those guys who, you know, you have 10 spots, vote for 10 people type of idea. I know there are some times where maybe, yeah, maybe there isn't 10 guys that deserve it. Maybe there's less. And I can understand that. If a guy says, you know what, I only see four guys on this ballot that deserve it. And that's fine. That's their choice. But I think Todd Helton is a guy that warrants consideration and voting. Do I think he'll ever get in the Hall of Fame? No, I don't think he will, but once again, he still had a strong enough career that warranted my, my consideration and my voting. But once again, I don't have a real vote, so this is just what hypothetical. The next one, though, uh, number six on my list, this guy does deserve to be in it, and that's Andrew Jones. Yes, his offensive numbers aren't off the charts spectacular, but the guy has 10 gold gloves. He would get under pop flies 
that other center fielders would have to run and dive for, and he would have such a great jump that he would camp underneath it and make it into a routine play. This guy was was probably the best center fielder of his time. You know, I, I look at him as being better than Jim Edmonds. Um, he just was so good, so amazing, and he could hit. He had power. He had speed. This guy was an all-around player, but defensively, he was just he was just off the charts, and the offense was the added bonus. He was a solid offensive hitter, so he was a bonus guy, and I was just all bonus at that point. So I see him as a Hall of Famer. I wish he would get more respect and more votes uh, for the Hall of Fame. I hope that he gets in at some point. I really do. Not sure if he will or not. Next on my list is Billy Wagner, one of the most dominant closers in a whole generation. Yes, there were there were other closers in that time. Uh, you know, a couple of them already in the Hall of Fame, deservedly so. I think Billy Wagner should be up there too. I think he should be in there. The guy was just a monster. I mean, the way he threw left-handed was just, it was so much fun to watch. I really think he should be a Hall of Famer. Um, once again, if others don't vote for him, I understand why. But he was one of the most dominant closers in the game. And I think that he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, next on my ballot, if I had one, is Kurt Schilling. I think this guy deserves it. I think he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I know that a lot of people won't vote for him because of his politics. And I, I understand that. You know, But at the same time, going back to Bonds and Clemens, Hall of Fame is a museum discussing and focusing on the history of the game. And Kurt Schilling is a part of that. He is a part of that Hall of Fame. You know, if you try to pick all the guys who you agree with, with their politic, political stances or the way they approach drugs or this and that and that, the Hall of Fame is full of guys who were horrible people. Horrible people. I mean, let's just be honest. There's a lot of great baseball players who weren't great people off the field, but they could play the game and they're in the Hall of Fame because of that. I want the Hall of Fame to be about the players and what they did on the field. Yes, there are some exceptions. There are some things that I understand why guys shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame um, because of things they did. Pete Rose is one of those. He is probably my dad's favorite player. He's one of the greatest of all time. I still am hesitant to put him in the Hall of Fame. Still hesitant. And I just, I know a lot of people disagree with me. And there are times where I change my mind. There are days where I'm like, yes, he needs to be in the Hall of Fame. And there are days where I'm like, no, he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. And I go back and forth on that one. So, Kurt Schilling, once again, gets my vote. Number nine on my list, Manny Ramirez. Now, this is the one that I actually scratched off my list, put someone else in his spot. Scratched them off, put Manny back on, scratched him, put him back on. And three times I scratched him off. because I. This one is, is different because he was caught cheating and suspended. This is different to me than Bonds and Clemens. Bonds and Clemens, I believe they cheated, never were caught, never suspended a day for taking PEDs. Manny Ramirez was suspended. And that's somewhat of a line that I draw. And I know some people look at that and go, well, that's stupid. That's a that's a weird line to draw. But being caught is different than, in essence, rumors and belief. Bonds and Clemens, although we are pretty confident there's level of proof, never were suspended, never were truly found guilty of doing those things Manny Ramirez was. But I still put him on my list because, you know, he still could hit. Man, that guy could hit. Couldn't play a lick of defense. Not a not a bit of defense, but he could hit. He could hit like crazy. Now, my last vote, if I had one, goes to Jeff Kent. This is one of the most dominating second basemen in the game. The guy had power. Guy could hit for average. He was a force at second base. And, yes, probably PEDs involved there. But, once again, never suspended. And so... It's a different line for me, different thing, and it's still about the history. And we talk about second basemen over the last 30 years who were dominant with power and, and average. Jeff Kent has got to be in that conversation. He's one of those guys. So that's my 10. There were a few guys I thought about and looked at, um, but really didn't have the space nor really the desire to put them in. 
Uh, Omar Vizquel, one of the greatest defenders of all time. Maybe the greatest shortstop defensively of all time. And I'm not sold on him being a Hall of Famer. I'm honestly not 100% sold on Ozzy Smith. Although he's already in, can't change that. I'm not sold on Ozzy Smith being a Hall of Famer. I'm not sold on, on Omar Vizquel. Although his defense makes me think really hard about that because that guy was just unbelievably good. Uh, Scott Rowland, kind of in a similar situation, although he he could hit, um, but his defense was was really his big thing. Um, but I don't think he is quite Hall of Fame either. I don't put him at that level. So those two guys, great defenders, great players, guys who I would have loved to have had on my team. In fact, I was a Mariner fan when Omar Vizquel was on the Mariners, and that was so cool as a kid to see that. But to vote them in the Hall of Fame, I just... I just don't see that. So, but guys, let me know if you agree or disagree down in the comments below. Go down there. You know, tell me who your 10 picks were. Or maybe you're one of those people who only has two picks or three picks. Let me know who you would pick. Leave a message down below. I want to see if you guys agree with me, disagree with me. Please keep it civil. Come on. This is baseball. Let's have fun. Don't bash other people for what they would or wouldn't vote. So, guys love this. I love talking about the Hall of Fame. Hopefully quite a few guys get in. I love seeing more than just one guy get in because those years are just, they're kind of boring. Not as much fun. So I'm Josh, the 90 Know-It-All. Have a good day guys and let's see who makes it to the Hall of Fame. Catch you later.